and they're not the only things. For some reason, I've got a teacher from Texas trying to tell me what it's like to be an author in England from the 1950s. Honestly, I don't think it's your area, love. But this entire story is weird, and looking into it, it's like an onion. The more layers you peel away, the more you want to cry. Because even the paper title is more complicated than it seems. You've got the obvious part where Tolkien was a Catholic, so how on earth is something that's religious supposed to appropriate something that was innately religious by its very creation? But the other part is that you've started to add politics into this from an American perspective, which doesn't make any sense. Because we're not in America. Strange. Because firstly, I'm gonna need you to define that term because uh, I doubt you can to anyone's satisfaction, especially when you're trying to make it to the satisfaction of two entirely different countries with two entirely different cultures and political systems. And the reason I know that any definition of these won't be applicable to an English perspective is because uh, of what you teach, specializing in creative writing, new media, and uh oh, 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 critical theory. Now on LinkedIn, which did have its privacy settings changed over the last few hours, it did say that the full specialization was actually critical theory and feminism. So I can only imagine that myself making a video on this is a problem to say the least. And for that, I can only apologize that I don't care. Although it probably is worth pointing out that she was the co-editor of a special bigoted edition of an online peer-reviewed journal. Strange. And if you're wondering what that little clip of Lenny Henry the Hobbit, I mean Harfoot, is actually from, then Rings of Power did release a second teaser trailer, which really had not much new in it. Although one of the things it had was this lovely lady, the Queen of Numenor, Tarmuriel. And I would like to point out that this is actually the art of Tarmuriel from before we had the Rings of Power. And now we've got the Rings of Power, Art, Rings of Power, the fans, Power, fans, Amazon, fans. They are filling in the gaps in the history of Arda. We can be assured that Amazon are doing this with love, care, and affection, and with the attention to detail that comes from the involvement of the Tolkien estate. Fans. Rings of Power. Fans. Because that little excerpt was from the blog of the Tolkien Society. You know that trip where they got an all-expenses-paid trip to London and given free stuff? It's not going to affect our opinion. The Tolkien Society are the same people who are putting on the Oxenmoot, which is the event which is showcasing this article, among many others. I mean, you know the Tolkien Society, the guy who chairs it. Sean Gunner over here, who likes to post things like, Amazon's Rings of Power show will not use real Rings of Power during filming. It's a travesty by Tolkien purists. Yes, I know it's a fake article, but the satire more reveals something else, doesn't it? Oh, the not using actual magical rings is just saying that people are being far too picky and they should just let Tolkien be destroyed. They should just let him change anything. Why can't they just change whatever they want? It's not as if actually sticking to Tolkien matters or anything. <laughs> no. Something that's designed to take the piss out of people nitpicking instead just means that he thinks they're nitpicking. That all of the changes that we've seen so far that were massively disliked by the actual fan base. Well, um, yeah, those are all really minor, apparently. Change what you want, do what you want. It's, uh, it's only the Tolkien Society, after all. It's not as if they're supposed to be defending the original work. Because it's really strange to him that anyone that likes Tolkien might actually speak out against the show. No, no, what you should really do, if you don't want anything to do with it, just shut up about it. Just shut up. Don't try and actually defend the original work at all. No, just, just shut up. Because otherwise, he's going to come back at you and going, Is this a bingo? Is this a bingo? Oh, I don't know how I'm going to stand up in the face of such argumentative prowess. Now, with this being the face of the Tolkien Society, I'm not surprised that they would do something as, uh, to use one of their terms, platforming an article like this. You're amplifying the message! But if anything, amplifying the message seems to be the entire intention. Because not only is this kind of work very common for her, she's written incredibly discriminatory and bigoted material for many years at this point. Strange. But the interesting part is when you get down to the Tolkienist's website, you actually find out a list of everything that's been done in the past, both written herself and chairing. And some of these sessions are absolutely amazing. Because it turns out on the 16th of April, um, this has already been presented somewhere else. So uh, unfortunately, the Tolkien Society are getting sloppy seconds of the presentation. Because if you just look at the papers for that day, not only do you have hers, you also have on this same day the mythology of Middle-earth and the theological roots of... <gasps> Cream people! I'll give you a clue. In the UK, we don't have much sun, and therefore, I don't actually need many chemicals in my skin to protect me from the sun. If you needed to go to university to learn that one, I could have saved you about a hundred grand. 
you're welcome. But it gets even more interesting when you find out the rest of the things that were shown at that event. Besides her, the April 22 conference sessions on Tolkien. This is the 18th annual Tolkien event at the University of Vermont conference. Because if anyone is qualified to talk about the culture of the UK, both now and in the 1950s, it would obviously be Americans. And look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Americans can't love Tolkien or know a lot about Tolkien or not even know everything there is to know about Tolkien. That's fine, that's his books. Talking about his culture though, and that of England in the 1950s, probably not a strong point over there, because I'd say even if you read into all of the 1950s stuff, you'd still be doing it from an American perspective, and you would have grown up within your sort of culture as it is, and that would inevitably influence your view of what it was like to be in England. But as you get down the page, you realise the purpose of these events is to take something that people love, enjoy, and care about, and then deconstruct it, destroy it, so that they can then take the pieces and reform it into something that's useful for them, useful for their own activism. No, I'm not making that up, they literally just say it. Modern environmental activism. Uh, activism and Tolkien. It's all over their page. Lord of the Rings Online and its role in deconstructing Tolkien. Why do you want to deconstruct something? Why do you want to destroy something? Well, it's because when you break something down to its fundamental pieces, it allows you to find little leeways, little, ah, maybe we could do this, maybe we could take this a different route, and then just pervert the entire thing. So it supports you rather than what it was intended for. And what it's intended for is without question, because we got it from Tolkien himself. In letter 142, he said, The Lord of the Rings is, of course, a fundamentally religious and Catholic work, unconsciously so at first, but consciously in the revision. That's why I have not put in or cut out practically all references to anything like religion, to cults or practices in the imaginary world. For the religious element is absorbed into the story and the symbolism, because he was brought up in faith and that has nourished him. And that is one of the reasons why I don't think that someone from Texas could possibly speak about his culture, because this is a culture that he was brought up. He was brought up in a Catholic family in England, in a time period where anyone with the beliefs of this author could not possibly even get their head around them, let alone anything else. Because for them, everything has to be viewed through this critical lens, which will just pervert anything they see. It's impossible for her to understand anything except from that point of view. A point of view which literally didn't even exist in England at the time she's talking about. This means that anything she referenced, anything she brings up, will be entirely alien to the culture and the person that she's talking about. To the work, it is completely and utterly irrelevant. You can read it and try and interpret it this way, try and change it to be this way, but it will never be that thing, and you will never be able to comprehend why. Because for me to even begin to explain it to you, it would require an open mind. It would require you to actually not believe all of the stuff that you currently do. Because you'll never be able to understand somebody else's different culture in a different time when you're obsessed with trying to look at it and interpret it through your current modern, weird, twisted cultural beliefs. And it's not as if that isn't by design. The ideas which continue on and thrive are the ones which inherently reject all other ideas. This is why religions like the Norse gods died out. They were like, oh yeah, there's loads of gods. Oh, you've got a different one over there. He probably exists as well, that's fine. And because they allowed the existence of somebody else's religion and the other one didn't, they lost. Ideas which will not allow the existence of any opposition point of view tend to be the ones which survive because they destroy the rest. And that is uh, exactly the point of this. The very idea that England in the 1950s could be entirely different to America would be an abomination to her. No, every human must be the same with the same innate but unconscious point of view. Otherwise, her entire ideology falls apart. And that's why none of this is a genuine attempt to understand or even enjoy Tolkien. It's simply, what can we do? What can we make this into? Can we construct it and rebuild it so it supports our point of view? We build it into our belief because we can't actually stand anything against it, but we can take it over. That's why you have meetings like this, of people spitballing ideas together, see if we can get anything together that sticks. That's why on Thursday, April the 14th, we had something which isn't even in the books, and just a meeting of bigots. Hardly a word unconsidered, uncloseting desire in Lord of the Rings. Honestly, mate, with a title like that, saying it's a sociolinguistic analysis isn't making you sound smarter. Wondered at the change. The potential of telling silence in the relationship between Legolas and Gimli. Oh, they didn't say anything about it. That's how you definitely know it happened. More cannot be said using a critical, which generally means anything but, semi-systematic literary review to understand academic silence on the potential of Legolas and Gimli. Essentially, they just really wanted that to happen, so wrote some fan fiction about it.
Oh yeah, but if I dress it up as an academic work, it must be true. Then obviously, playing back Lord of the Rings and the rolling deconstructing Tolkien. Because if Tolkien is deconstructed, if it's in pieces, then you can make it into whatever you want, or interpret little parts of it however you want. But if you see Tolkien as a holistic, complete piece of work that was designed how it was meant to be, finished as it was meant to be, well then none of this is possible because you can't interpret that anymore because it's finished. This is why we have to break pieces off so that we can look at them on their own because out of the context of everything else, that way we can just make them into whatever we want to be. This is the obsession with deconstructing in the modern times. That's why it's done by people who have a goal they want to achieve not by people who are looking at something and simply seeking truth. Something else I'd be interested in watching was Fantasy and the Faux Cult, teaching Tolkien in the age of Jordan Peterson. There are two things that you think couldn't possibly be related, but we're going to cram them together anyway. Were there any parts where Gandalf said to Frodo, you better clean your room, son, just so you can get that ring out of here? I have a feeling there wasn't, and if there wasn't, I have no idea what the relevance is meant to be, but it might be something the fact of, oh no, someone else is just handing out ideas, and these ideas completely and utterly destroy the worldview that we want to present, so somehow we're going to have to work out how we can get around these ideas, because, uh, you know, they're actually causing problems for us and getting our ideology out of front of everyone else. And if I've got that wrong, Christopher, you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm just assuming that because of everything else you're surrounded by. Such as Friday the April the 15th, where we just had lunatics in charge, apparently. <laughs> oh yes, activism and Tolkien, where can that go? Oh look, we start with a title that I'm not even sure I can read out. I mean, hey, it's academic. That's how we get around all of this stuff, right? Don't worry about me. I'm just an academic. I'm supposed to be respected. Where at the same time, you see the title, you have to do a double take to say if you've read that correctly. And it's not as if the second one is any better, I've got to be honest. <laughs> but if there is anything that I'm sure we can all agree is central to all of Tolkien's works, it is obviously uh, modern environmental activism. Yeah, the key to that especially is modern. The books aren't modern, what are you Do doing? This is just open mask off admission that we're taking modern beliefs and perverting a classical piece of work with them just to get what we want. And that is what all of this is. That is what this is. That's why they're all shown at conferences together. These aren't things which are just designed to celebrate Tolkien or look into things in a bit more detail. No, it's about modern beliefs on classic work. How can we take this and change it? Because it's what we believe, and we want to force that onto something that was written in the 1950s. We want to take what we believe in academia, which isn't even represented of the rest of the country anyway, but then we're also going to take that from America and force that onto something that was written in England in the 1950s. It's not about what Tolkien said, it's about what we can tr make people believe that he meant. And it's not just academics that believe that. That is why entertainment is the way it is. That's what the Rings of Power is going to be, and why all the same people which are saying this about Tolkien are supporting it. Oh, we have no problem with what they say. It's definitely going to be Tolkien, because they've been looking at Tolkien through this weird twisted lens for so long. They no longer care about what it's meant to be. No, you're just nitpicking. All of that is just nitpicking. And besides, even if the show's awful, don't worry, most TV shows don't get great until season three anyway. We'll just wait until season three. Oh, don't, hang on, don't rush the boat, don't rush the boat. Just wait until season five. The finale will probably be good. While we deconstruct the works of Tolkien, we're also going to demand that you view Rings of Power as a holistic piece and don't judge it before you've seen all of it. Because logical consistency is one of those moral principles that, honestly, it just gets in the way more than anything. It's way better over there, kind of happily ignored. So while Star Wars has courted a new fan base focused more on shipping characters than story, plot, and characters, Rings of Power is definitely courting another one, definitely pandering to a different group. And it's a group which don't actually like the books. They don't like Tolkien or the beliefs of Tolkien. Instead, they're just looking to change it, to alter it, to say what a terrible person he was. Because if we can retcon his story, we might as well retcon Tolkien as well. It's not as if anyone's going to defend him. No, and if they are, then we're just going to try and humiliate them. Why are you defending Tolkien, you moron? You shouldn't be doing that. No, seriously, why are you defending Tolkien? If you don't like what we're doing to it, just shut up and go away. <laughs> because we've got different priorities now. It's not about making something which actually accurately follows his views. No, instead, we've evolved beyond that. Now we just show whatever we want to show, regardless of what it was before. And the message is that the people that we want to push forwards, regardless of who should be there in the first place, well, 
They're important now. And don't worry, because those type Bs, they can be anything. They can even be brutal murderers too. I'm all for it. Yes, women can be evil murderers too. And if that is not an inspiring message that will send you off into the future just desperate and gagging to watch the Rings of Power, then quite frankly, I don't know what you could possibly want. Because it better not be Tolkien, because it's not what you're going to get. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below. If you liked the video, press like. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Rubber bye.